Greetings, and welcome to the Saved by Nostalgia podcast. I love the power glove. It's so bad. No! I feel the need. The need for speed. Sweep the leg. You have a problem with that. Better alive, you are coming with me. Look I what you it. did, you little jerk. Look. I'm coming to get you. Get busy living. You get busy dying. You are next. And the thing is, after all these years, I still look back with wonder. Well, I'll tell you what, Jeff, you know, of course, you know, there's a couple, I don't know if you, you know, I'm sure you've been talking to Noah. There's a couple idiots out there that are going back and reviewing all 86 episodes of Say by the Bell, and you're talking to them, so congratulations. We are the idiots. Oh, cool. <laughs> um, first off, what do you think about that? I mean, do you, uh, when you were on this show for the two episodes you were on it, did you ever think that it would have the staying power that it that it has had? Never. Never in a million years. No. I didn't I didn't realize it would become like this still today, years, this many years later. Yeah, like and, and like you say, it was only on two episodes too. So uh, especially never, never for me for sure. <laughs> but they were very memorable episodes, Jeff. Of course, you played the memorable role of Maxwell Nerdstrom, which uh, yeah. is just unforgettable. Kind of just talk about how you got involved with the show, how your, your maybe the audition process was. If you met with, uh, you know, uh, with Peter Engel and sure. some of the writers and producers, how did that all kind of come about for you? Oh, gosh, yeah, I remember that like it was yesterday, actually, because I don't know if you've heard this, heard this or not. I actually crashed the audition. So, oh. um, yeah, it was my roommate's audition. And, <laughs> and he brought home, I'll never forget it, he brought home the sides. And I looked at it, and he showed it to me and said, are you kidding me? This is perfect for me. So much. I, I said, I'm going to go. And he didn't care. <laughs> so I crashed it. But it was such a long time ago, and I didn't even know, you know, what times they usually saw people and all that. And I ended up crashing that lunch time. <laughs> and uh, the casting uh, director, Robin Lippin, was still there. And mm -hmm. uh, she must have known I really didn't have an appointment. But she, she wanted to hear me read anyway because she liked my look. So she actually heard me read, brought me right to the producers. Um, I think it was that same day, actually. Uh, and I met Pete, uh, Peter Engel, and like the the, fo the following day, I heard I got the part. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> so, yeah, it's pretty amazing. I, I, that story is definitely one, one for the ages. Yeah. What would your roommate have to say about that, knowing that you got the audition, you crashed it, and you got it, and he didn't? Oh, you know, he was fine with that. And, and you know what? He's got his own great life right now. His name... Um, his name is Jeremy Davies, and he does a lot of work around anyway. So he he, he does a lot of film, Saving Private Ryan, stuff like that. Oh, wow. um, yeah, yeah, he's really, really, <laughs> really in in the film. Well, it worked out for both of you guys. Unfortunately, he can't be on the podcast though because you got the role, Jeff. But uh, what That's are some what? of your memories? Yeah. What are some of your memories of working uh, with the cast and crew, uh, whether it's the main cast of kids, other cast members, Dennis Haskins, uh, you mentioned Peter Engel there a little bit, and, uh, some other producers. Yeah. yeah. Uh, always wonderful. I mean, uh, the, because the, the two episodes that I did were two years apart. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah. So the first one I did in 1990, and that, that was just, just fantastic. I mean, it was from what I remember being on the set all week, um, there wasn't one thing that sticks in my mind that the whole thing was just un unbelievably pleasurable, you know, the whole thing. And then a couple of years later, they called me out of the blue to do the second one, but they wanted to make sure I didn't get too old. So they brought, so they brought me in first <laughs> and then they said, okay, yeah, yeah, we can, we can still cast him. He still looks young enough. So <laughs> I just wish they had cast me in more. That's all. Oh, absolutely. We do as well. But, uh, you talked about that first episode, 1990, House Party, and uh, yeah. you were a little rough there on Violet Bickerstaff, your girlfriend, who was played by uh, the great Tori Spelling, uh, and uh, Jesse yeah. Elizabeth Berkeley tries to uh, stand up for her, and you tell her you know exactly what she needs, and you plan a kiss on her. We have to ask, oh, what yeah. was that like, uh, kissing Elizabeth Berkeley, kind of swooping her down in your arms? 
Oh, that was wonderful, of course. <laughs> There's so many adjectives you can use to describe that, but I mean, they're, they're, they're all positive. <laughs> Definitely wonderful. Uh, she's great. The whole cast was just really easy and nice to work with, and um, it was just it was just great. I just wish that, yeah, fantastic. Well, Jeff, talk about uh, kind of where, how you found kind of the voice and the mannerisms for Maxwell Nerdstrom. Uh, one of the more identifiable nerds in the entire show, and there are many. Uh, but talk about kind of how yeah. you found uh, found your your way with Maxwell and kind of what your plans were for him and how you think it came out. Sure. Sure. Well, when I first saw the sides, I saw that he wasn't just a nerd, but he was a sarcastic nerd. Uh, he <laughs> thought he was, he really didn't look at himself as a nerd. He thought, he thought he was, I mean, you know, six foot two, tall but, and handsome, according to him. So he just walked around like he owned the place. And I saw that in the sides. And so I decided to go that way with it, you know, and I, it just made it a little bit funnier, you know, that <laughs> this little guy, thinking he owns the world, walking around, kissing girls, (laughs) you know, snapping his fingers and telling me to get over here (laughs) and telling them to get over here. Yeah. So I just, in the script, it kind of lends itself to that. Um, So it was kind of easy to make up the character uh, because he was obviously very, very, very uh, sarcastic. A little mean, too, you know, a little pretentious. (laughs) <laughs> Just a little bit. Jeff, we wanted to ask you to recreate uh, one of your scenes uh, where you kind of see Screech talking to your girl, Violet. Uh, then you call her over and read her the riot act a little bit. So uh, if we can get you to one last time, come and play the role of Maxwell Nerdstrom for us. That would be amazing, my friend. Oh, sure. No problem. Uh, let's see what I can do here. Uh, let me think of the line. Uh, Violet and Bickerstaff. I find you with this man uh, uh, with uh, and my gold pocket protector. Uh, you have to remember one thing. You're my squaw. And remember that. It, I, I don't know if it's the exact line. but Oh, that was like great, that. Jeff. <laughs> something like that. that. That's amazing. You still you still got the voice down, and that's, uh, that's really cool. Um, so it's – the show was becoming really popular in 1990. I mean, it had already been out for a season. Kind of what was your awareness of Say by the Bell before kind of uh, you, you crashed this audition? Obviously, you had to know, you have to, you know, have a little basis of knowledge about the show before you went in, but yes. what did you know about it? Yeah, I did. I, I, I had seen it before the audition, even before that. Um, and I, I, I always liked it even before that because I, get, I always had a crush on Haley Mills, who was on it before uh, it became saved by the bell i think it was good morning miss bliss and i had the hugest crush on her when i was a kid and uh and she wasn't on it anymore of course but that's why i knew a little bit more about the show as well because it was she uh she was actually on it playing the principal i think beforehand well jeff uh, kind yeah. of talk to us about the rest of your career you've been in some big shows especially for back in the the late 80s, 90s, Family Matters, Step by Step, Friends, The Drew Carey Show. Kind of talk to us about oh, yeah. uh, some of those roles and your memories from those. That's right. Gosh, yeah. Uh, Drew Carey was uh, so much fun to, uh, to film. Um, I remember him taking us all out afterwards to eat after the, uh, on, the, on the Friday night afterwards, you know, at a place in Burbank. Was a lot of fun to film that. I'm always playing nerds, it, it seems, on every, <laughs> on every, especially on TV. Yeah, a lot of nerds. Uh, Friends was great to film uh, with Susan Sarandon. That was really cool. Uh, what else? Uh, Magnificent Seven actually was really cool to do as well. I got that part by doing a show, by, by, by actually doing a play as well called The Nerd. <laughs> <laughs> of so, course. Yeah the, yeah, the producer was in the audience, and he came up to me. And he goes, uh, after the show, I have got such a great role for you. And I thought he was just, oh, yeah, yeah, somebody's saying this. And his name was John Watson. He was the producer for, you know, um, uh, the actual show, Magnificent Seven, because his mm-hmm. kid was in the show, and I didn't even know it. <laughs> <laughs> wow. So, and lo and behold, four months later, I get I get a call from my agent saying that they want me to come into the callback board, and then I... I booked that too. So it it is a lot of who you know, you know. It absolutely is, uh, Jeff. And of course, um, you know, we've been talking to 
uh, you know, Bennett Tramer, who wrote uh, several episodes of uh, Peter Engel's been on this show talking about it. I uh, just kind of talk about, um, you know, the, the famous uh, first off, have you been to the Save by the Max restaurant yet? Yes, I, I actually have done a couple of events there. Uh, Isn't that cool? The other cast members. Oh, it's wonderful. Oh, it's just so like exa- almost exact. It's really neat. They have great burgers too, great cheeseburgers. <laughs> yeah, it had to bring uh, you, that, bring you kind of back. Um, you, uh, I mean, mm-hmm. so when you uh, filmed this, did you film the, the sets and everything? That was that an NBC, is that at Burbank? Is that where you filmed? Most of ever. Yeah, I, I, if I'm correct, I think it was at Rally Studios, but it was an NBC show. Uh, NBC show, yes. Mm-hmm. Yeah, absolutely. It's um, yeah, it's a, it's a show that will. Uh, it, it just, it's funny, you know. We're talking about 30 years later, and and it's as popular now as ever. Of course, it lives on 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 Hulu and and uh, on streaming services. Yeah. Do you ever have people that kind of approach you or remember you or talk to you about about this kind of frequently or? Yeah. Yes, I do, and that's the weird thing because I only did two episodes. But I'll be in a grocery line, and you know, I think it's the voice. They always tell me it's the voice, and then I put it together, <laughs> and yeah, you know, they, they they put it together with the actual character, not just I know that voice, but I remember him as Maxwell Nordstrom, you know. So, uh, so well, that's good. That's great. Yeah, <laughs> you know, I'm glad you 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 love the show and. Uh, and all that, but yes, a lot. I, a lot of people do. They look at me and then they give me that look, and they, you know, they say, "Were you Maxwell Nordstrom?" <laughs> yes, I am. Wow, what a memory! <laughs> yeah. yeah, there's this kind of a That's strange phenomenon fun. with the Say by the Bell. Uh, we remember all these characters. We remember them fondly, and we have just these vivid memories of them. And we go back and we look, and it's one episode, two episodes. You're like, no, 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 no. It's got to yeah. be more than that. But it's just these few episodes. It's yeah. crazy. It's yeah, yeah. That's what I I hear from everybody. It was only two episodes, and I, you know, that's why I never thought it was going to be a big deal, especially for me. But it was nice. It was one of the first things I did, so uh, ever. <laughs> so it was uh, yeah, that was way back there in the '90s. So I was just a young and actually, even though I was older than everybody else in the cast. Well, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Well, what what well, were some of your memories of uh, working with Mark Paul Gosler specifically? Because uh, in those two episodes, House Party and Class Rings, it was really mainly you two uh, that had the interaction. Uh, you worked a lot with Mark yeah. Paul. So what were your memories of him? Oh, he, he's a great guy. I mean, uh, it, it, there, there's no, you know, like specific memory that comes to mind about him. He was, he was just very, very nice to work with, um, you know. You know, had a really nice personality, very, you know, great with the guest stars, great with everybody. The whole cast was, you know, really. And I, I remember uh, Ruth Buzzy was on that episode, too. <laughs> we just had the, the biggest ball on that set <laughs> with, with, with her. We could not stop laughing for, for eons with her. He played, uh, she played Screech's mom. Yes. Uh, with the, oh, yeah, with the uh, Elvis statue. And she, she was just she was just something to work with. Very funny lady. <laughs> uh, in the in the house party episode, the uh, the other nerd that was featured was was Herbert Hodas. Uh, do you remember working with him much? He was on several episodes as well, and one of the most famous nerds. Uh, what are your memories with, of, of Herbert Hodas? With the blonde fro <laughs> afro out there. Oh yes, yes. Okay, yes, I do. I think he may have been on um, a couple of the episodes that I was on. Those two. Uh, I totally remember him. Didn't really talk to him much, though. Uh, but I, I do remember him, you know, like, like it was yesterday. It has a very interesting look as well, you know. So, yeah, he was on a lot of those. A lot of those nerds were just on, like, all the time, you know, uh, week after week, either as extras or who that they, they had lines under fives and stuff like that. So it was fun. It was fun to play nerds on that show. It really was. They could go any way. Well, it'll definitely something that will never be forgotten, Jeff. And we can't uh, thank you enough for taking some time to talk to us uh, about to say by the bell in your career. And we're just hope, just glad everything's going great. And we just cannot thank you enough. It's just been a pleasure, man. We uh, best of luck going forward. Likewise. We hope uh, with the, with the play and everything. Hope everything turns out great for you. Oh, thanks so much. I appreciate. Uh, I really appreciate it, guys. Thanks for calling, and uh, it's been a pleasure right here as well. Right back at you. you. You Jeff, bet. it was Thanks an absolute lot. pleasure and honor. And like he said, we wish you all the best in the Sunshine Boys moving forward. And uh, anything else you have in your future, we wish you all the best, my friend. Thank you so much. 
Thank you. Likewise for you guys.